Today we're going to be talking about the z-axis, that is the vertical axis of your budget printer. And we're going to be talking about, I think, some things that are misunderstood about the design and why it's probably okay the way it is from a machine building perspective. The first thing I want to say is that there are plenty of good mods for your z-axis. There's lots of reasons you may want to run dual z drives or add more structure to your to your gantry system or things along that lines. Um, but there's one common mod to these printers that I think is, is just kind of fundamentally misunderstanding the principles and, and what's cheap about it too actually. Because uh, you know like most people who buy a cheap printer uh, I'm no exception the first thing I did was started printing you know a whole bunch of accessories for it and the one I skipped was the z-axis constraint and I, that's what I want to talk about today. So the first thing we're going to talk about is why I don't think it's necessary and then we're going to move on to why I think it's bad. So the reason it isn't necessary is because your z-axis is a very very slow driving axis uh, and even, even in a rapid traverse, it never moves fast enough. It never spins fast enough to damage the bar or to whip anything like that. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's never going to be damaged by being unconstrained. Um, and, and that's the reason you don't need it. So I think the common misconception is the reason there isn't a constraint at the top is because they wanted to save a couple bucks on buying a bearing and a piece of plastic bracket to retain it. And I don't think that's the case at all. I think the reason there isn't a retaining bracket or a bearing at the top is because they wanted to buy you a really cheap lead screw. Because if you know anything about manufacturing, I work at Swiss Machining and I, it's long skinny parts is my bread and butter. If you know anything about manufacturing a long threaded part like that when you have a very big length to diameter ratio where the length is much longer than the diameter, it, it's very easy to maintain an accurate pitch. Uh, the measurement from one thread to the next across a very long length with almost every threading method. And, um, and that way they can buy a cheap screw and know that the travel of your z-axis is going to be really accurate. What they lose in that cheap screw is it's much more difficult to make a long screw like this straight. And if you drive your z-axis up and down at a rapid, you'll see this knob wobble around. You might not have a knob, that's another printed accessory. But you'll see that the top of your axis wobbles. And it is. It's because it's a cheap drive screw. They save money on the drive screw. They don't care. Maybe they care about the bearing, but that's not the point. They got you a treat, cheap drive screw. Now, at the bottom, we're coupled with a flexible coupler. So we do have some flexure there. By being flexible here and constrained here, it allows all the air just to, to be imparted out in air here as, as that rob wobbles. So if you constrain this, instead of wobbling at the top, you're forcing that error into your driven nut, which imparts that error to some degree into your frame. And that's why you do not want to constrain the top of your cheap Z-axis drive on your budget printer. It's okay to leave it loose. It's better to leave it loose. There is actually really good design principle even if it's for the purpose of using a cheap part, they're doing a really good job of mitigating the error in this cheap part with that design idea. And that's, and that's why I don't think you should ever put that on. So the second thing I wanted to talk about was the brass driven nut. I think this is another point of confusion for people. Um, I admittedly have seen a lot less complaints about this and I don't think I've seen anybody try and address it necessarily. Um, but I still think that's a point of confusion here. Um, the reason they use a brass drive nut is because if the nut wasn't softer than the, the drive screw, the, the drive screw would wear prematurely. And the drive screw would wear heavier down at the bottom of the axis where it gets used on every print and less towards the top of the axis where it gets less use. Meaning that you would start to get layer height error towards the bottom and that would somewhat dissipate as you went up and it would just, it would be problematic. Um, as this wears, it's going to wear evenly and it is going to cause backlash in the system to one, to some degree. Uh, but there's, there's a couple, again, there's a couple mitigating factors to that. The first is that for the most part, your 3D printer is only driving the Z-axis in one direction during operation. 
That's not always the case. You might be z-hopping, uh, you might be running some custom software, uh, but, but that's kind of the more minor factor because what really mitigates any kind of backlash in your z-axis is the fact that the z-axis gantry is always subject to gravity and its own weight is resisting that backlash. And that's why a brass drive nut is good is because you want the wear in the nut and you want your screw to last as long as possible. So not only are those tips about modifying and maintaining your printer, but I also think that they're really cool examples of how thoughtful design has made really cheap printers highly functional and allowed us to bring CNC technology home um, at a price point that, that most people can afford it. So I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you learned something, and I hope you took that silly thing off your printer. Like and subscribe guys, thanks for watching.